onto Logic and then just mess with it in there because it's already chopped up itself so there's nothing that we don't have to put it in a sampler it's just something that we've owned for a long long time it's just one of those sort of breaks that we've got and then as you know when you're usually running a break beat that you want to make it a bit fatter in this day and age so you'll obviously run a kick with it first as you can hear but what we've just done is just um, drag and drop the kick. It's a straight up audio into the logic, which is running on no player. There's no sampler basically running the kick. It's just straight in there. And we'll just move, the, move it around to get it bang on time. And if you go to the snare itself, same thing. That's the snare there. And it's the same with the snare. Drop and drag it straight into Logic and then just move it around where you want the snare to be. That's not the full beat because obviously you've got your percussions to come in and so forth. What we've done on the channel itself, just put a limiter on the channel so you've got one there. So it's obviously it's just pumping out how you want the break. And obviously we've got a nice EQ on there. Well, there's just not much going on but it just brings it out. But as you know with nowadays music, it's more driven, kick and snare driven. So you wouldn't really do too much to the break. You wouldn't EQ it to death and you wouldn't, you know, you don't want it too fat because the fatness comes from those things. That's what makes it fat. And right, so this is the kick and the snare there. With the kick, we try not to compress our kicks or snares. Because we find that when you compress the kick and the snare, it just takes something away from it. Just sounds too digital. Yeah, I don't really like that digital sound. Hence why we've still got a lovely analog. Mackie Desk! That still loves us. <laughs> so we still use that. So as you can see, as I said, our kick and our snares, it's just straight up uh, limiters coming out on their channel, which output they're on, and just a slight little EQ. As you can see, this is our kick EQ, our kick drum. Not much to talk about via EQ. You can see just a little bit of mid in there. You go to the snare drum, which is just a little average standard snare EQ, nothing too much. Because you know, we like to have our sounds already originally fat from the beginning. And plus, if you're looking for break beats to download or kicks and snares, nine times out of ten it's been compressed and all that anyway. So you don't have to do that. So, right now we've got a rift going, which is the, um, the mighty Omnisphere that we're using. It took us two days to load this thing up, but then once we got it going, what amazing piece of equipment this is. <laughs> so we like to use like dirty sounds and not so much clean house poppy sounds. Our, our thing has always been dirty. So this is that's the sort of riff that we've played along with this. If you have a listen. We like to add, we've got some distortion on it, on top of distortion, so we like it a bit growly and a bit nasty, and, and as for the EQ, we just bring up the high end of it, just, you know, not so much at the bottom end, because obviously the bass is going to do that for us, and that's how we sort of run our, um, our noise, sort of sounds, our keyboards. It's a preset, but it's, you know, we've messed with it, it's called Bad Boy Glide Shock. That, that's what we've used in there, and then there's this vocal thing that we've played about with that, you know, we, as I said, we, we've been using for this song. And we've just sort of got it looping, really. And it's just climbing. And that's for the vocals, there it is. Yeah, 
and it's all just climbing up in level. So if you look at the automation, as you can see, when we use vocals, we, we always compress our vocals like anyone else. We put a nice vocal compressor on there. And also we use, uh, I don't know if anybody uses this nowadays, we use a speech enhancer. It brings out the vocals even more without, you know, making them sound even too more metallic -y and too digitally. Without actually taking away from the vocal itself. And then you've got the EQ, that's what we're using on that one there. All the things that you're seeing, nothing's gospel yet because it's not mixed. You know, as we're, we're a sort of band that like, we sort of do it as we go along. And then at the end of it, we'll have to come back and do it all again. Do you get me? That's how we sort of do it. So because we find if you're too fidgety as you're going along, you lose the vibe, you lose the momentum, you lose even what you were trying to do in the first place. So we try and do as much as possible as you can go, as you can go along. And then when you think you've got it, then you go all again, start again. And obviously the sampler, I shouldn't say obviously, but the sampler that we're using to run the vocal is him again, the Mighty Contact. Great bit of equipment there. There's the Wave Player. So if you, all you do, you just drop and drag your sample in there, whether it be an 8th or whatever, an MP3, just drop it and drag. And then you just do your keys, you break it up there which you just put it on from C1 to C4 or 5, which is obviously there to the range, range, yeah. range, which is very straightforward. And you've got it there. Yeah. I'm just letting it go. And if you look at the automation, what was done to the vocal there, it's just going, it's building it up and level. Now we've got the, the intro, the sort of warm up bit of the song. Now we've got the beat where it drops in here. This is the break that comes in on top of the intro break that you heard. This is the break itself. With our brakes, we do compress our brakes, but as we said earlier, we do not compress the kick or the snare. And there's our lovely compressor there. If you remember that break, we had this break in the beginning. Now this is the break that's just joined it. And to add on to that, it's the same kick and the same snare, but different patterns that's going to join it. So, this is the Omnisphere what we're using still. It's got a nice sort of rocky sound to that, like an electric guitar, sort of with distortion on it, but there is no distortion on it, it's just the sound that we sort of chose to use. I'm just opening it up now, so you see what I mean. This is called an angry whip lash. And we've sort of messed with it again, back in, you know, just added some more delay onto it, and some sort of, well, very, very short delay, but we just played with the sound, really. And that's, that's is what we've got. Yeah, so, and as, as we've got there, as you said, we've got the, Thing going on there now, the guitar. That's our bass. Well, with the bass now. 
now, because with bases we use all different types of way we do our bass. This is from a, a sample off one of our old songs. The bass sound is. So we've used the EX S24. This little baby that I'm sure everybody knows what this is. It sort of took the uh, Akai's place really. Yeah. And, and then with that, that's like our EQ for the bass. That's because that's just the top end for the bass. When we use basses, sometimes we use just the bass sound, as you can hear here. There's no bass in the bass. It's just the sound. And obviously... And then we'll have a sub running underneath it. Sometimes it isn't a sub, it's just the same bass but with the the top end out as you can see here. And this is what you get. See some people would just use a normal sub bass and then just the normal bass sound on top of it. But with us we find that that sort of we, it's, you can tell it's that too often if you've got a, a, a bass sound and a sub underneath it. You can just, it sounds like that, but with this it doesn't sound like that, it sounds like the actual bass, if that makes any sense. And then we just run it together. Um, in that track, in the beginning, as you can hear, going dun, 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 dun. We use a sub on that, but we use the Mighty Trilogy. This is this keyboard. Lovely, lovely keyboard. This is like a very well-known bass keyboard. You've just got loads of sine waves and hundreds and hundreds of countless of patches and just goes on forever with subs and ears and it. It's just endless. Or bass sounds. I don't even think we've still even heard all the bass sounds in that. And that's the pattern for it on the beginning, as I said, there, the notes. Then, then the other bass comes in. Definitely giving away a lot. <laughs> Good thing there's no more music business, isn't it? I wouldn't have you in there, I'll tell you that now. I wouldn't. I wouldn't have you. And then with the vocal, we've just got a short loop, as you heard there. Where was the vocal? Again? Yeah. So what we've done, we've just recorded it with and added a crash with the vocal, so just build it up to make it sound like a sample, that's the best way to always do things. Like, that's basically what the Americans do, you know, that's what they do. They're, they're champion at building up samples. Usually choose the wrong ones, but they're, they're, they are kings at that. you got to do it to the Americans. I hate picking up the Americans, I fucking hate it. This is where we sort of change the bass line, so it's not so rolly and it gets a bit more, get your head down as we call it. distortion when we get it really nasty but not not too carried away I don't think that sounds carried away but it just sounds right and then with that just got the same EQ that was used before in the intro because it's the same sound from the end on the on this bit.
a B line, as you can hear. See, most people wouldn't be able to do that because they'll just have a sub go in there. As I said, we don't really do that. We use the actual bass itself and use the bottom end and on one channel we'll use the top end. And this is the bottom the end of it because a, a sub would never sound as good as this. It's just the sub, which you get me? But this is a lot better. As you can tell, look. The sub would never sound as good as that. So, so we've actually dropped out the bass and just used the, the bottom end of the bass. The bass sound is dropped off. So this will be like the first section of the track. The atmosphere again, this is the bad, the glide sock bad boy. It's very guitar y sort of vibe. Depending on what it is, we like to put spreaders on them, like normal stereo spreaders that people use. Like if you see, we've got one here. It just gives it a bit of width to the song, but they don't like to get carried away with that because then it starts sounding like a f***ing pop song you're trying to get on Radio 1. Jimmy, you know, because it sounds all crystal clear, and but, you know, we're not really about that sort of thing. You know, they want to play it great, I hope they do, but you know, we're not going to produce it. Make it super clean and super crystal for them. I don't think that's the way do you know what I mean? to do music. Just do your thing. <laughs> Those three sort of sections where you've got the intro, you've got your where the bass sort of comes in, and we've got where the bass changes, where that would be like the verse. And that's it. We're not really sure on what way we're going to go. I'm really not sure. Because we think there's a lot there, there's so much you can do with that. Jeremy is so, so, so much. And especially what we've got them to sing as well. You know, feel like going on. Because in the music industry, you speak to anybody in our sort of situation, the heart, the most thing that everyone talks about is to be motivated and to keep going. That's what everyone talks about. I just it's hard to be motivated. Even when I speak to distributors we're with or um, PR people or whatever, that's what they all say. It's about being keeping motivated because you know the, the game has shrunk dramatically, hasn't it? You know you can't sort of deny that. And this is what this song is called, Going On. Where we're going to do with Going On, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but we have to do something. So, but, yeah, that's all I could say, really. Yeah, so that was us, Shap and Dart, in the studio. Just taking a look behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. How we got our tunes fat. And you're some... lucky you get in here. You're lucky you got in here. <laughs> Trust me. Yeah, our studio doors usually got a big bolt on it, but Tim's got a nice face, so we let him in. 